There's a whole conversation on the platform of YouTube from content creators that are talking about tons of YouTubers that are stepping away from their dream job. And I put that in quotes, but it really is a dream job for everyone. Gen Z and Gen Alpha pretty much just want to be YouTubers when they grow up. That's like the number one answer that they say when they ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? I used to say actress and YouTube is the new acting. <laughs> So why are these people quitting? Now, this is a trend that I've been noticing for quite some time. And a lot of the creators that actually ended up quitting, I had been observing a pattern that was occurring previous to them actually quitting. So in this video, I just kind of want to share my thoughts of being a creator myself on this platform for five and a half years and watching these journeys unfold and how to be able to prevent this if you are a new YouTuber who is just getting into it. I also want to talk about another element that no one is talking about when it comes to astrology and how these astrological planets that are moving in the sky are actually impacting us, including all the creators. So this trend of quitting things that are misaligned might actually be something that you're recognizing in your own life as well. Don't worry, I'm going to explain this in colloquial terms. Pluto is the planet of transformation and it's one of the slowest planets that goes in our solar system. It takes 248 years to go around the sun. Sun. That's a long time. That means that the different placements that Pluto has over the span of that 248 years create these generational shifts, but they're generational patterns in that there is a same energy around or present in the air for quite some time. So the theme of Pluto this year is all about accepting limitations in order to mutate or to bring something new into the world through your individual experience of life. This is not about doing something that is logical or something that you've previously experienced before. It's just a knowing that you need to go in a certain direction and the start or the first step to making it happen or bringing something new into the world. And something new is not something old. And so if you've been a YouTuber for 10 plus years or however long that you've been doing it, it might make sense that you want to step away. Now there's a few nuances here to consider and I want to dive into the various ones. YouTube really works best for things that have already been invented. The best way to grow a YouTube channel is to find a niche that already exists and create content that aligns with what is trending currently in that niche. Of course, you can give your own spin on those things, but only to a certain degree in order for it to really get taken off. That is a limitation. If you're not a YouTuber, you're not necessarily aware of all the things that go on behind the scenes of running a YouTube channel. But I think one of the things that people have even the littlest awareness around is how the business of YouTube actually operates. When you are a creator, there's tons of this influx of opportunities that come your way. You would be shocked at the amount of opportunities that YouTubers get, and they have this opportunity to respond to whatever is coming to them. So they're not having to actually initiate new things. And they usually have a lot of support behind the things that they say yes to, as well as a lot of money that goes along with those things. And so when these YouTubers are getting all these different opportunities from a vast array of areas that don't necessarily have to make them continue doing a YouTube channel, why wouldn't they just let go of that limitation? <laughs> all of these YouTubers are beginning to become aware of this different pressure that is within their bodies in order to start something new. I remember one night in particular, a tightness started to build in my chest. So they're starting to notice that their message that they previously shared doesn't fully feel aligned moving forward. This is definitely something that I have personally gone through as well in navigating this YouTube journey. I feel like Matty Hapoya is a great example of this. He is a filmmaker who has created a lot of content on how to create epic videos. And while he enjoys creating that kind of content, what he really wants to be doing is making films and nerding out on really cool lighting techniques, but really cool lighting techniques don't really go trending on YouTube, but he wants to do it anyway. So a lot of these individuals, they're actually just evolving on the platform instead of fully stepping away. They're just starting to do it in a way that is more quality than quantity. Another really good analogy that I heard Marcus Brown talk about from this perspective is that with YouTube, you have all of these different roles that you have to play you have to be the person in front of the camera, the person behind the camera, the person scripting the videos, the person editing the videos, the person, the person making the thumbnail, the person uploading the video, the person running the analytics, all of these things. And there's parts of it that you don't like. And so you end up hiring a team in order to overcome it. The business was doing well, my YouTube channel was growing. And so I did what all successful creators do. I hired more employees. 
But then that team ends up costing a lot of money. Adding more team members meant adding more expenses. And requires a lot of management, which then in turn requires you to step out of being that creator that you started this from into someone that is now managing a team of creatives. And that's just not as fun. Matt Diavella talked about this on his channel where he specifically talks about how he's alone again for the first time in a long time. He no longer has a team because he really wanted to gain a little bit more freedom. He just became a dad, congratulations. And he is going through that process, that transition into parenthood, which is seriously so challenging, I can't even start. At that point, the cost feels extra heavy, and not only are you personally struggling, but it's also pulling time away from your family. I wanna spend time with my family. And what would be the easiest thing to quit that will continue bringing in money even when they stop creating? YouTube. So once again, whether you're getting pulled apart through all of these different opportunities that are coming your way, or you're getting pulled in all these different directions trying to manage the team and you no longer are enjoying the creation process, it ultimately is going to pull on that family time and people want it. Another person that a lot of people haven't talked about is Vanessa Lau. She's someone that is kind of in a similar niche to me in terms of online business marketing and being a content creator, all that jazz. She was running a very successful online coaching and course business and got to a point where she was like, you know what? I just don't want to do this anymore. It doesn't feel aligned. Like I stepped out of my corporate job in order to have freedom. And I feel like I'm just working all the time. And so I'm stepping away from my business. So the big question becomes, if you are a new YouTuber or someone like me, that has not had the major success that these people have had just yet, what does this leave you thinking about? Now, I obviously cannot speak for everyone, but I can tell you what I am thinking of how to approach YouTube this year, and it is very different than how I have approached it in the past. One of the ways that I have heard is to make money outside of just getting paid to post videos, and this can include having a business on the backside of your YouTube channel. That's the one that I have really chosen, and it does work really well. I just took off four months, once again, almost five months, and my income has continued to come in because people find your old content and they're binging it, but then there's not new things coming out and they want to connect with you and they want more. And so they join your program. Another option outside of running your own business off of your YouTube channel is to just have a nine to five or some sort of other way of making money. So I am also seeking sources of income, like investments and stuff, to be able to create more money outside of YouTube so that this can be way more fun and allow me to just post when I want to post rather than having to really have my hand tied, trying to get it done every single week when it doesn't feel in alignment. Ultimately, when you're a creator, if you get out of alignment, your content just stops resonating. So it's just not good for either party. So those are really my thoughts on people quitting YouTube. Have you noticed this trend? And have you personally noticed a shift in what you are seeing on the platform? Because it definitely seems to be happening. And because there's the audience shifting in what they are watching and how they're consuming, AKA you, it begins to actually shift the algorithm in a positive direction that allows us to create more quality content instead of quantity. So drop your comments below and let's connect. See you in the next video.